Let's try T, nothing. Let's try R, okay. R is good. Okay, P looks like it's working. Don't have any more guesses though. In this video, we'll walk through how to build the game Hangman in Python. This will be a simple command line game. It'll allow for user input, and it'll also output a visual of the current Hangman alongside the word that's being guessed at every turn. Hey everyone, it's Kalen from Kite, the AI autocomplete for Python. We'll be writing all of our code to run the program in a single Python file called hangman.py. Additionally, we'll have another Python file called words.py that holds a long list of words to use for the game. A link to the completed project is in the description of this video, so check that out if you're interested. Now let's get started. First, we need to define a function called getWord, which will return a word for our game. For this function, we can either create a list of words or we can import a list of words for the program to choose from. I previously created a file that contains a list of several hundred words, so I'm just going to import that list into our file. Then we want to randomly choose a word from this list, so let's also import the random library. Inside getWord, let's call random.choice on the word list. Kite actually presents this completion as I start typing rand. Next we'll return this word in all uppercase by calling upper. We'll be converting all user input to uppercase to make our comparison logic simpler and so the word is printed in all uppercase for the user to read. For the actual interactive gameplay, we're going to define a function called play. Let's create several variables that we will be updating during each turn the user takes. First, we want to display the word during each turn. Let's represent unguessed letters as underscores and then show letters as correct guesses are made. To do this, let's make a string called word completion. This will be the same length as the chosen word. It will initially contain only underscores. Next, we'll create a variable called guessed that's initialized to false. Now let's create two lists, one that'll hold the letters the user guessed and one that'll hold the words the user guessed. The last variable will be the number of tries. This corresponds to the number of body parts left to be drawn on the hangman before the user loses. Counting the head, body, both arms, and both legs, this will be six. Quick side note, I've already created the seven visual stages of Hangman. This includes the initial empty state as well as the other stages, and I store these in a list within the function called display hangman. The index of each stage corresponds to the number of tries the user has left. We'll be using this to display the current stage of Hangman at each turn in the command prompt. So back to the play function. After initializing the variables, let's print some initial output to help guide the user when the game starts. So for instance, let's play hangman, the initial state of hangman, and the initial state of the word with all underscores. We'll also print a new line here. The main chunk of our code will be encompassed in a while loop, and this will run until either the word is guessed or the user runs out of tries. So for the condition we'll write, while not guessed and tries is greater than zero. Since each iteration of the loop corresponds to a turn by the user, we'll first prompt the user for a guess with input, please guess a letter or word, and we'll store the guess in a variable. We'll also make sure to cast this to uppercase. Inside the loop, we'll have three possible conditional branches, each based on different user input. Guessing a letter, guessing the word, or typing something other than a single letter or word of the correct length. Let's create this if-else block. Guessing a letter would mean that guess has a length of one and contains only characters from the alphabet. So we'll call isAlpha on guess. Guessing a word would mean that the length of guess equals the length of the actual word and contains only letters. Then we'll have an else statement that'll catch everything else, and we can just print not a valid guess. After each guess is handled, we'll print the current state of the hangman and the word. We'll also print a new line to space out each turn. Let's start with guessing a letter. We're going to need another conditional block inside this if statement. Checking if the letter has already been guessed, is not in the word, or is in the word. So if guess is in guessed letters, let's just print you already guessed the letter, and print the letter with it. Then, if guess is not in the word, we'll print guess is not in the word. Here we'll also decrement the number of tries by one since the user made an incorrect guess, and we'll append guess to guess letters. The only remaining possibility is that the user made a correct letter guess, so we'll make an else block and print good job, guess is the word. Once again, we'll append guess to guessed letters. Next, we have to update our variable word completion to reveal to the user all occurrences of guess. For this, we'll first convert word completion from a string to a list, so we're able to index into it. And we'll store this in a new variable called word as list. Now we need to find all the indices where guess occurs in a word, so let's use a list comprehension. 
Here, we're calling enumerate on Word to get both the index i and letter at the index for each iteration. We're appending i to this list if its corresponding letter equals guess. You can read more about what functions like enumerate do by looking over at the Kite Copilot here. Now let's use a simple for loop over indices to replace each underscore at index with guess. Then let's update word completion with the new changes by calling empty string dot join on word as list to convert it back to a string. It's also a possibility that guess now completes the word, so let's include an if statement to check this. We write if underscore not in word completion guessed equals true. I wanted to take a moment to tell you more about Kite, which is an AI coding assistant that's being used in this video. Kite is a free plugin for your code editor that uses machine learning to save you keystrokes while you're programming. If you're using Atom, VS Code, Spider, PyCharm, Sublime, or Vim, Kite will seamlessly integrate into your coding workflow. Kite can complete entire lines of code and has a feature called intelligent snippets that will help you fill in arguments and method calls with variables defined earlier in the script. The window you'll see on the right side of my screen throughout the video is also a Kite feature called the Kite Copilot. It automatically shows you relevant Python documentation while you type based on your cursor location. The best part of Kite is that it's free and you can download it from the link in the description below. Now let's move on to the conditional for guessing a word. Similar to guessing a letter, we need another conditional block inside of the if statement. Checking if the word has already been guessed is correct or is incorrect. So if guess is in guessed words, let's print you already guessed the word. If guess does not equal word, let's print guess is not in the word and decrement the number of tries by one. Let's also make sure to append guess to guessed words. Then in our else statement, which means that the user correctly guessed the word, we'll set guess to true and word completion to the full word. And that finishes up our while loop. After the while loop, let's check whether the user guessed the word correctly or ran out of tries. We do this by checking if guessed is true. And if so, let's print, congrats, you guessed the word, you win. Otherwise, we'll print, sorry, you ran out of tries, the word was, insert word, maybe next time. Finishing up, we just need a main function to put everything together. Let's first get a word from get word. Then let's pass this word to play. This is all we need here to run the game once, but let's add some code to give the user the option to play again. Let's create a while loop asking the user for input, prompting play again, yes or no. We'll call upper on the input and check if it's equal to y. Then inside, we'll call the same two functions we did before. Therefore, our program will continue as long as the user types yes to play again. Lastly, we'll just add this code fragment here so that our program will run by running our script on the command line. And we're good to go. Now let's run our program. Okay, start the game, we'll type python, hangman.py. The game initializes and we can start guessing. So A, nothing in there. Okay, great, let's try E and E's in there. Nothing on O, nothing on S. Let's try N, let's try T, nothing. Let's try R, okay, R is good. Okay, P looks like it's working. Don't have any more guesses though. What should I try now? Okay, I, good. Let me just guess the word since it's my last try and predict doesn't work, so let's play the game again. Try A's and they're good. Let's try E, nope. And M, nope. Let's try S, great. Let's try T. Let's try W. Running out of guesses and try C. Let's see if I can guess one more. Nope. Ran out. So let's play again. Let's try A. Let's try another vowel, E. Great, we got E. Let's try N. Okay, let's try T. Nice, T is in there, let's try S. S is in there, good. Might be able to guess it. Great, I guessed the word. Nice, our game works, and we can say N for no, I don't wanna play again. Great, we succeeded at building a simple hangman game in Python. I hope you had fun making your own game with Python, and if you're feeling ambitious, you can implement a GUI for this game next, so the game isn't played entirely from the command line. Thanks for watching, make sure to subscribe to our channel for more Python skill building, and don't forget to download Kite. It's free to use, and you'll code faster and smarter with it in no time. See you next time.